One of the worst failures you can have on your 3D printer is for the hot end fan to fail, which can lead to clogs, jams, all kinds of damage. It's never a good thing. So I'm going to look at one way that you can help prevent these kind of failures, which is to use a tack fan that will stop your printer if the fan fails. Before I get into this, I want to acknowledge the work of Andrew Ellis, who wrote the guide that I'm using for this video, as well as Alchemy, who wrote the macro that we're going to use to stop the printer if the hot end fan fails. So what is a tack fan? A normal fan has two wires, plus and minus. A tack fan has three wires, plus, minus, and the tachometer signal, which sends a pulse every time the fan spins around, which lets the controller figure out what the RPM of the fan is. And we're going to use the macro that we're going to install to say if the RPM goes below a certain value that we pause the fan. Ellis's site, which we'll link to in the description, has links in it to some 4010 fans which are appropriate for the stealth burner or other hot ends. I'm going to be working on my V0, which has a dragon burner. Right now it has a 3010 fan, but I am going to install a 2510 Delta in its place. The designer of Dragon Burner has found that the 2510 fan actually works really well because it has a smaller hub. So I'm going to put that in using an adapter that is printed just for this. So this fan will go in here and then I'll be able to hook up the tachometer. While I have the hot end removed to put in the 2510 fan, I'm also going to install a couple of our vendor 4010 blowers. These are West 3D's in-house brand. They're about 20% more powerful than the fans that I currently have, so it'll be a nice upgrade. And once I get that done, we'll take a look at how to wire the 2510. Okay, so I have the hardware installed done on my hot end, but before I get into the next step, I'm going to go back and let's talk about what you need to set up with a tack fan. So it's a three wire fan, as I said, it has plus voltage, your switched ground for control, and then your tachometer line. So the first thing you need is to figure out how you're getting these signals between your hot end and your control board or your MCU. If you're running a printer that has a harness with many wires, you're probably going to need to pull an additional one or two wires between the hot end and the control board for the tack line and potentially for your voltage for the fan. So for example, if your tool head is set up for 24 volts, but you're using a five volt fan like I am, then you're going to have to run a five volt line to the tool head along with that tachometer line. And then you can just tap into the switched ground line of the normal hot end fan. If you're running a CAN board like I am in my printer, then you may have an easier time of things assuming you can get the right voltage. Let's take a look at what I'm doing with my machine. So I'm running an EBB36 CAN board on my tool head. The fan ports are set up for VIN, which is normally 24 volts, but I am not using any end stops. I'm using sensorless. So I can pick up five volts and an end stop pin to run the tachometer line. You have to take the tack into an available input the easiest thing to do there is to use one of your end stop pins, or I guess you could probably go into a probe pin if you have one available. On the EBB36, the end stop connector is a JST plug, which locks more firmly than the DuPont for the probe port, so I'm going to go into the end stops. So I'll take the red wire from my fan and go into the plus five volts. I'll take the blue wire for the tack line, that will go into PB5, which is where I'm going to pick up that end stop. And then I'm going to take the black line, which is the switched ground that's used for speed control. That will go into pin PA1, which is the original hot end fan control. So I've got all the wiring done and I'm ready to check things out on the printer. 
quick edit here. I forgot to mention you should install a diode in the tachometer line to make sure that you don't get back voltage through that line. What can happen is the fan will ground itself through the tack line, which means you'll lose the ability to turn the fan on and off. And more importantly, this could damage your, your main board. What you need to do is get a diode. I just use the standard BAT85 diode uh, that we use on probes and install it in the tack line in between the fan and your controller board with the black stripe of the diode toward the fan. This will stop backflow voltage and you won't have any problems with blowing up your motherboard, which is never good. So the first step is to make sure that your fans still work because we've changed wiring. We need to make sure that everything's okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the main sail interface and I'm going to heat the hot end to 50 degrees to make sure that the hot end fan comes on. And I've got a spinning fan, which is good. So I'm going to put that into cool down and then I'm going to turn on the part cooling fans to make sure they're working. And I've got both my part cooling fans. That'll cool that hot end back below 50 degrees. That's already off and we're good. Let me shut down those fans. So now that we've confirmed that our fans work, we need to do the software installation to add the tachometer pin. I had to stop the video and come back because the tachometer wasn't reading correctly, I found there's another parameter that needed to be set. So let's take a look at mainsail. Here under the hot end fan control, I had already set the tachometer pin and it really is pin PB6, not PB5 because Big Tree Tech numbered things out of order. I had to set this tachometer pole interval. Uh, this is a 15,000 RPM fan. And when I first turned it on, I was only reading about 5,000 RPM, but by setting this, it's pulling the RPM more quickly, and I'm now getting the RPM that I should, which let me go here. If I go to the dashboard, and I'm just going to fire this up to 50. You can see the hot end fan will increase It starts off a little bit lower, but it does increase up to uh, 15,000 RPM. So that is working as expected. Let me cool this down. And I'll cool the nozzle. Okay, so we now have the hot end fan working and it's reading the RPM that it should. So our next step is to put the macro in that will do something if that fan stops working. So for this, we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to create a file. Let me jump over to my text editor. So this should be fantechmonitor.cfg. And I'll open that. I'm going to come back here and select everything and paste this in. Pretty much the only thing you have to do here is set your min RPM and the number of consecutive stops that you want. So I just leave that at three so that if you have this fluctuation more than three times, then that's going to trigger. Um, the other thing that I've done is here under the fan stoppage routine, which is the macro that actually gets triggered if your fan stops. Since I use Mobile Raker, I've put in a notification that will send the printer name has a hot end fan issue to all of my Mobile Raker clients so that I'll get remotely notified that something's happening there. So I'm going to save and close that. The last thing I need to do 
is I'm grabbing the include statement that we need to put in the printer config and that will load the fan config with the macros when the printer starts. So I'm going to save and restart. So now back in mainsail, I'm going to set the hot end fan to run. Then I'm going to pull the connector on the EBB board and make sure that it fails as it should. So the fan is running. Let me go here. Okay, the hot end fan has been turned off. We have warnings. And I've got a notification that this printer, Munin, has a hot end fan issue. So that's how you can set up Clipper with a three wire tachometer fan and run a macro so that you can have your printer pause when the hot end fan fails so you don't get heat creep and blocks and all kinds of nastiness and potentially rip your whole hot end apart. So I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to bringing you more videos soon.